Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark with Thailand Unplugged. Back with the latest news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Germany says the King of Thailand cannot rule from there. Germany's foreign minister has said that Thailand's king should not be conducting politics from the European country, where he spends most of his time. King Watsala Longon monarchy faces unprecedented calls from reform from protesters in Thailand. We have made it clear that the politics concerning Thailand should not be conducted from Germany's soil, Germany's foreign minister said. If there are guests in our country that conduct their state business from our soil, we would always want to act to counteract that. The EU that Germany is a part of halted contact at all levels with Thailand after 2014 coup, but resumed trade talks after general elections last year that saw General Priyat Chinacha reinstated as Thailand's civil prime minister. King Watsala Longon, 68, has been on Thailand's throne since 2016, but spends much of his time in Bavaria, where his 15-year-old son is at school. Thai protesters have complained about the cost of the king's stay in Europe, as well as his absence from the kingdom. The protesters seek to reduce the king's powers under the constitution, which specifically allow him to exercise powers when he is outside of Thailand. Protesters also want to remove his direct control of the royal fortune, estimated to be in excess of 60 billion US dollars. A total of 22 individuals make up the Thai royal family, including unofficial members and former spouses. The exact wealth of the royal family cannot be publicly declared as it is protected by the Les Majes laws. The assets can be spent at the king's leisure. The palace has made no comment on the protests. China shakes off virus in Golden Week. Trains were packed, tourist attractions crowded, and airports crammed. There were the scenes across China during its just-ended eight-day National Day holiday. They are unusual sights in a world gripped by the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, where many countries are still recording mounting infections and contemplating renewed lockdowns. But not so in China, which reported the first coronavirus case in the world last year. The National Golden Week holiday saw 637 million domestic trips being made. Just released figures from the Chinese Communist Party. The travel rush generated 94.3 billion in tourism revenue. While Chinese media initial figures as evidence of the country's robust recovery, some economists had expected the number to be higher, which suggested the pandemic and the economical slowdown were still weighing on Chinese consumers. The official Chinese Daily said in an editorial on Thursday that while the figures did not match last year's, it still reflects a strong recovery in consumer confidence and widespread post-pandemic feel-good mood. If this momentum can be maintained, the Chinese economy which surged 3.2% in the second quarter from 6.8% fall in the first quarter might realise substantial positive growth this year. Despite the combined blows it has taken from the pandemic and the US administration's containment and protectionism policy, said the newspaper. Chinese economy is projected to grow 2% this year, the World Bank estimates, and is widely expected to be the only major economy to register a positive growth. Political economist Hu Zhangdou said the fact that tourism spending did not recover to last year's level showed that the Chinese consumer was still cautious about the economical impact of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. He pointed out that many people had lost their jobs, fewer consumers had enough spending power to travel. For many, if they can maintain their lifestyles, it's good enough. Travel is a luxury for those who are rich, he added. Thailand 
Thailand's army criticised for alleged political use of Twitter. A former politician whose party was apparent target of a disguised online propaganda campaign by the Thai army earlier this year said Friday she and her colleagues planned legal action in response. Panika One Inch Former spokeswoman for the now dissolved Future Forward Party said they had already been gathering information about the Army's Information Operations, or I.O., when Twitter announced Thursday that it had identified, removed 926 accounts that had unacknowledged or concealed links to the Thai military. She described the worst aspects of the Army's alleged actions to be using taxpayers' money to cause rifts and hatred amongst Thais and said the former party will file a lawsuit when its fact-finding is complete. Thai media have speculated about the general nature of the Army's I.O. activities, but Panika said Twitter's action proved that the allegations were real because the social media company neutral party not involved with Thai politics. Twitter announced it had taken down accounts with suspicious links to state agencies in Cuba, Russia, Saudi Arabia and Iran, as well as Thailand. Thailand's army's domestic information operations on Twitter was used primarily to promote pro-government and pro-military positions, accounts in Twitter and to attack political opposition, particularly the Future Forward Party and Move Forward Parties. The Future Forward Party won the third highest number of seats in the last year's election, but was dissolved by Constitutional Court in March this year for an alleged financial violation of elected law. The ruling was controversial because the opposition party appeared to be targeted by the government for its popularity and anti-military position. The party's leaders were expelled from parliament and banned from political office for 10 years while its remaining lawmakers mostly regrouped as the new Move Forward Party. An Army spokesman, Lieutenant General Sitapong Sampaya, told reporters Friday that the Army used Twitter for communication with the public and insisted it was no policy to use false accounts for any information operations. He said the Army would contact Twitter. Boeing's F-A-18-3 Super Hornet could be heading to India. Defence contractor Boeing has announced its interest in supplying the F-18A Super Hornet fighter jet to the Indian Navy. The jet has earned a reputation of being among the most lethal, advanced combat proven, multi-role frontline fighter in service today. The Block 3 variant can perform virtually every mission in the tactical spectrum, including air superiority, day-night strike with, with precision-guided weapons, fighter escort, close air support, suppression of enemy air defense, maritime strikes, reconnaissance, forward air control, and buddy refueling. There are now more than 700 FA-18 Hornets and Super Hornets in operation and the Block 3 variant is currently being manufactured by the US Navy. The FA-18 Block 3 Super Hornet, the frontline fighter of the US Navy, is on offer to Indian Navy. It will offer the most comprehensive war fighting capability to the Indian Navy while enhancing cooperation between the Indian Navy and the US Navy. On a side note, the US Navy has begun to ramp up efforts to find a replacement for the Super Hornet. In August, announcing it would cut production to accelerate the development of the next generation carrier-based fighter program. So the F-18 Block 3 Super Hornet is on sale, so grab yourself a bargain. They also have specials, buy one, get one free. On special today, we have a set of steak knives coming with the F-18 Hornet. They have operators on the line now waiting for your call. China has deployed tens of thousands of soldiers on the Indian northern border. US Secretary of State 
Michael Pompeo said in a further sign that deadly military standoff between the world's most populous countries is far from cooling down. The Indians are seeing 600,000 Chinese soldiers on their northern border, Mr Pompeo said. Each of the three major Indo-Pacific democracies, India, Australia and Japan, which form the so-called Accord along with the US, is under threat from the Chinese Communist Party, Mr Pompeo said, according to the transcript released by the US Secretary of State. Mr Pompeo also criticised China's response to the Chinese coronavirus pandemic and its telecommunications infrastructure and said the country steals intellectual property. President Donald Trump has vowed to take serious the threat from General Secretary Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party and we are no longer going to allow them to run around cost free and imposing their vision for the future upon the West, Mr Pompeo said. The comments came after a second ministerial level meeting of the Quad in Tokyo last week, in which Mr Pompeo called on the other participants to band together against coercion from China. The Trump administration has been critical of Beijing in many topics, from trade policy to the Chinese coronavirus, while India is growing increasingly wary of China's economical and military influence in South Asia. Pompeo warns of China risk ahead of US-India talks. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo urged closer ties with India as a warning of China's growing might on its doorstep amid a flurry of diplomacy between the world's two largest democracies. They absolutely need the United States to be their ally, a partner in this fight. Pompeo said his four-way meeting early this week in Tokyo with his counterparts from India, Japan and Australia. The Chinese have now begun to amass huge forces against India in the north, Pompeo told radio host Larry O'Connor. The world has awakened. The tide has begun to turn and the United States under President Trump's leadership has now built has now built out a coalition that will push back against the threat, he said. Following the Tokyo meeting, Pompeo will travel shortly to New Delhi with Defence Secretary Mark Asper for annual talks with their Indian counterparts. Tensions have soared between India and China since the violent hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the Himalayas region of Ladakh in June that left 20 Indian troops dead. China has acknowledged suffering casualties but has not revealed any figures. On national security grounds, New Delhi has since banned dozens of Chinese apps, including TikTok, the blockbuster video sharing platform which had counted on India as its largest overseas market. Despite wide concerns about China, India has historically shied away from formal alliances with outside powers under its doctrine of strategic autonomy, but stated they expected India and the United States to discuss boosting defence ties during the visit of Pompeo.